Hello class, welcome to Unit 9, Video 5. Today we're going to be solving rational equations still. Um, so your learning target, um, it's the same as actually the last video, is that you can solve rational equations. Okay, last time when you were solving um, rational equations, they were more like uh, monomials. Okay, so probably had something like 1 over 2x plus 1 over 2 equals 5. Okay, so these are all monomials. Say we're going to be looking at things that you need to factor. So you might have 2x plus 2 over x plus 2. Okay, and then we'll have to do a little factoring and figure out what our common denominator is. So that's kind of the new part for today. So just to recall, um, a rational equation is any equation that contains one or more rational expressions. So here is an example. We would have 2 over x plus 3 equals 5 over 2x. There's one. Um, like I said, today the kind we're going to be doing is like 2x plus 1 over x minus 1 plus 5 over x plus 1 equals x over x minus 1 squared. Okay, that's another example. Um, when you do factoring, um, when you have like quadratics um, and you solve, you may have extraneous solutions. Okay, so this is why we always check to make sure our answers are correct. So an extraneous solution, it's kind of a funny definition, but it is when a solution is not a solution of the original equation. So what happens is you solve it, you get an answer, but when you plug it in, it doesn't work. That's what an extraneous solution is. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into example one. Okay, solve the rational ex equations. Be sure to eliminate, eliminate extraneous solutions. Okay, so number one, first thing we need to do is find our least common denominator. In order to do that, we need to go ahead and actually factor. So r squared minus one, we're going to factor the bottom. Um, r squared minus 1 is really r plus 1, r minus 1, okay? And this is over 1, so I would say between 1, this denominator, and this one, my LCD would just be r plus 1, because I have 1 here and 1 here, and r minus 1. Or you could think about it as r squared minus 1, okay? So just like yesterday, we're going to take each side and multiply it by that denominator. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and write it out. Okay. I would have all of this times this. Okay. Another way I can rewrite this is as r squared minus 1. Um, so I'm going to write it as r squared minus 1 for here. So it'd be r times r squared minus 1 plus, um, we're going to keep the top. So it's r squared minus 5 over sorry, r squared minus 5 times, or multiplying by, r squared minus 1, all over our denominator, r squared minus 1, equals our numerator that we have, so r squared plus r plus 2, times r plus 1, r minus 1, all over r plus 1. Then I'm going to go ahead and simplify. These will cancel, and so does this. Okay, so now we need to simplify. I'm going to distribute, so I would have r to the third minus r plus, that's not very clear, that's a 3, plus r squared minus 5 is equal to, now I have to multiply these two, so I'm going to distribute. So I would have r to the third plus r squared plus 2r. Then I would multiply everything by negative 1. So I'd have negative 1 r squared, so negative r squared, negative r, negative 2. Then what we need to do is just combine our like terms. Okay, so on the left-hand side, there is no like terms to combine. I'm just going to rewrite it um, in standard form where it goes from highest exponent to lowest. Okay, here, oh, these aren't the same, are they? A little carried away. Um, I'm going to combine these two, which actually they're going to cancel. So I'll have r to the third. Now I'm going to combine these. 2r minus r is just a positive r minus 2. 
Now I'm going to solve. Okay, one thing I would notice is right away my r to the thirds. Okay, if I'm going to combine them, I'd actually subtract r to the third from both sides, and look what happens. They both cancel. Okay, now looking at what I have, I'm going to have a quadratic, because there's an r squared here and there isn't anything here. And the way we solve quadratics is moving everything to one side and then factoring. So I'm going to subtract r, and then I'm going to add 2. These will all cancel, so I would have r squared minus 2r minus 3 is equal to 0. Now we must factor. And what multiplies to negative 3 but adds to 2? Negative 3 and 1. And when I solve, I get r is equal to 3 and r is equal to negative 1. So now we need to check for extraneous solutions. Okay, so what I'm going to do is plug it all into my calculator. So our equation is r, so let's just do 3. So 3 plus, um, it'd be 3 squared minus 5. So 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 5 is 4. Divided by our r squared, which would once again be 9 minus 1, which is 8. Okay, That equals 3.5. Now I want to see if this side would equal 3.5. Okay, I would have r squared, so 3 squared plus... 3, so that's 9 plus 3, so that's 12. 12 plus 2 is 14, divided by um, r plus 1, so 3 plus 1 is 4. Do they equal? Yes, they do. Okay, so that's good. So 3 works. Now let's try negative 1. Okay, we would have negative 1, okay, plus r squared, so negative 1 squared minus 5. So negative 1 squared is 1 minus 5 would be negative 4 divided by, if I plug in negative 1 to here, uh, negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay. Biggest thing is, can you divide by 0? No, you can't. So when I plug it in, you're going to get error divided by 0. So guess what that means? This is an extraneous solution. Okay. It's always important to check your answers, but this is a good time when it's an extraneous solution. If an answer makes your denominator zero, so like if I plug it into this one, it'd be negative one plus one, which is zero, that's a good hint that it is extraneous. So when it's extraneous, you do not write it down. On, if you write it down on your quiz, you'll lose points. So the only answer you would write is r is equal to three. Okay, that is example two. So a lot to take in. Um, so if you have questions on example one, come and ask. Um, otherwise, let's go ahead and look at example two. Fairly similar to example one, big thing we got to do is factor that denominator. This one factors to x plus one, x minus one. So our denominators, x plus one, x minus one, and then this one is both. So I'm just going to make them all x plus one, x minus one. Multiplying all of our numerators by that. The other way you can think about it, or it's x squared minus 1. So when I do that, okay, I'd have this. So I'll have 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 1 all over x plus 1 minus 1 times x plus 1 x minus 1 over x minus 1 equals negative 2. And you guys see how this one's x squared minus 1? That's why I'm going to write this one so it's easy to see. Just like in our last notes video, if you do this and your denominators don't cancel, you made a mistake. You need to go back and look it over. So we cancel, and here's what we have. 2x minus 2. Here's where people will also make a mistake. If it's subtraction, you need to distribute a negative. So we'd have negative x minus 1 equals negative 2. On our left-hand side, I would combine like terms. So I would have x minus 3 equals negative 2. And if I would go ahead and add the 3 to the other side, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Okay, so let's just see if it's extraneous. If I plug this into my, any of my denominators, does it make the denominator 0? 1 minus 1 is 0, so guess what? It is extraneous. So that is not a solution. It's an extraneous solution, which means it doesn't count. So what's my answer? I only got one answer, so this one is actually a no solution.
you have any questions on example two, once again, come and ask. Otherwise, we got three more to go. Okay. Oh, sorry, four more to go. Um, so let's go ahead and look at example three. Okay, rational expressions or at rational equations, we need to solve it. So factor the denominator. I look at this one. I see that it could be 3n plus 1, and this one would be 4n minus 1. And if I factor out a 2, I would have n plus 1. All right, so we got 3, 4, and 2. So my LCD for this one. Okay, what number can I get 3, 4, and 2 to all be? 12. And I would have to have an n plus 1 and an n plus, sorry, an n minus 1. Okay, so that's what I'm going to multiply every single numerator by. My LCD. Okay, so I would have 7n. I'm probably going to run out of room if I do this. Um, but 7n times 12 times n plus 1, n minus 1, all over, and I'm going to use the factored form, 3n plus 1, minus, I'm taking all of it times 5, 5 times 12 times n plus 1, n minus 1, all over 4, n minus 1, is equal to 3n times 12 times n plus 1 times n minus 1, all over 2n plus 1. All right, now here's what has to happen. Every denominator has to cancel. n plus 1 cancels. Okay, 12 divided by 3, 4. Okay, n minus 1's cancel, 12 divided by 4, 3. Uh, n plus 1's, and then 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay, so let's simplify a little bit. Let's see, we have 7 times 4 is 28. So we're going to have 28n times n minus 1 minus 5 times 3, so 15 times n plus 1, equals 3 times 6 is 18n, n minus 1. Let's distribute 28n times n, so we're going to have 28n squared, minus 28n. Now be careful, got to distribute negative 15. Minus 15n, minus 15, is equal to, distribute the 18n, 18n squared minus 18n, okay? Um, I noticed that I'm going to combine my like terms on the left-hand side, so I'll have 28n squared minus 43, n minus 15 is equal to 18n squared minus 18n, okay? Then I would say, oh, it's a quadratic, so I'm going to move everything to the left-hand side. Keep that n squared positive. Whoops, that got a little crazy. All right, plus 18n. Uh, this gives me 10n squared. Negative 43 plus 18 will give me negative 25n. Minus 15 is equal to 0. This one's nice because I noticed they're all divisible by 5. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 5. So I have 5n squared minus 5n minus 3 is equal to 0. So I have my quadratic. Oh, silly me. 10 divided by 5 is not 5. 2. 2n squared. All right. Good. Now I have my quadratic. My a in my quadratic is not 1, so I have to do, be a little, so it's a little bit trickier. So I would say what multiplies to 2? Well, 2n and n will multiply to 2n squared. Now we're going to try what multiplies to 3. This is where the guess and check kind of comes in. Uh, multiplies to 3, 1 and 3. Then the way we get to negative 5 is multiply this. This gives me n. This gives me 6n. With those two, can I get to negative 5? If this is negative, and this is positive. All right, so that works out. Now I need to solve. 5 equals 0. That gives me nothing. Or really what I could do is divide both sides by 5. That leaves me with 0. So then I would set each side equal to n. So I have, this is 2n. 2n plus 1 equals 0. And n minus 3 equals 0. So subtract 1. 
So n equals negative 1 half, add 3, and n is equal to 3. Okay. I know we would have to go back to our original, check if anything would make my denominator 0. Nothing would. If you want to check your answers on your calculator, which I recommend, um, they would both work out. And so your answers for number 3 are negative 1 half and n equals 3. Example four. Okay, we have a rational again. I'm going to factor this second fraction's denominator. So this one's going to be p plus one, p minus one. Um, and so oh, that's going to be my common denominator. Um, so I'm going to multiply them all by that. Or remember that's really p squared minus one. Okay, so last, on the last month's video, we eventually got to that point where we didn't write everything out. So we're going to do that right now. All right, so if I take this, I'm going to still have the original numerator. Now, if I take this times this, the p plus 1s will cancel. So I'm only going to have to multiply by p minus 1. Equals, okay, have my original numerator. When I take it times this, this and this will cancel, so I have nothing plus p times, I have to multiply by everything, so I'm going to use the p squared minus 1. Okay, now we have a lot of foiling to do, so let's distribute this p. So this would give me p to the third minus p squared plus p. Then I would do the negative 1. Ah, it's going to go all the way to the p squared first. So minus p squared plus p, and then I multiply these, I get minus 1, equals p squared minus 7 plus p to the third minus p. So now I'm going to combine like terms and put it in standard form. So I have a p to the third minus 2p squared plus 2p minus 1 equals nothing to combine here. So p to the third plus p squared minus p minus 7. Okay, so I would notice if I subtract p to the third, they're going to cancel. Okay, so if they cancel, I notice I'm going to be left with a quadratic. We always like to keep our quadratics positive if we can, our, our x squared or p squared term. So I'm actually going to add the 2p squared to the other side. That means I'm going to bring everything over. So, 0 equals 3p squared minus 3p minus 6. So you could factor out a 3, or you could just divide like I did before, right away everything, by 3. So I have 0 is equal to p squared minus p minus 2. Factor it. I would say what well, multiplies to negative 2 but adds to negative 1. The only thing that multiplies to 2 is 2 and 1. I want it to be negative and I want it to add to a negative 1. So I would mean this is negative and this is positive. When I solve it, I get p is equal to 2 and p is equal to negative 1. Okay, if I plug 2 into my denominator, I'm fine. However, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so this one's extraneous, so my an only answer is p is equal to 2. Okay, Okay. so that's it for our straight up solve the equations. Now we're going to have to do a few word problems. Okay, so we have Brianna and Owen paint houses together. Okay, if Brianna can paint a particular house in six, six days and Owen can paint the same house in five days, how long would it take the two of them if they work together? Okay, so they're going to work together. So let's just Think about this for a second. If we are looking at um, Brianna, all right, um, she can do a house in six days. So let's just say that she has 12 days, okay, just, just so we can wrap our head around what's going. Let's say we have 12 days. Okay, how many houses can she paint in 12 days? You take 12 divided by 6 to figure out she can paint two houses, okay. Um, now, let's say we have 18 days. 
she has 18 divided by 6, that means she can do three houses. We are trying to figure out how long, so we don't know how many days. Let's say it's X days. So it's really X over 6. That's how many houses Brianna can paint. Okay, so this is the rate at which Brianna does. Um, it's a, the days per house. Okay, so this is what Brianna can do. X plus 6. Plus she's working with Owen. Okay, if Owen has X days, she's, he's going to do X over 5. And that's going to equal how many houses are they are they going to complete? A particular house. So they're only going to paint one house. Okay, so there's that. Um, here's our equation. Now we just need to solve it. Between 6 and 5, our common denominator would be 30. All the numerators. So I'd have 30x over 6 plus 30x over 5 is equal to, don't forget to multiply that one, 30. There will be a problem like this, I do believe, on your quiz, if I can remember. So I'd have 30x over 6, that would be 5x plus 6x equals 30. Add these together, I get 11x is equal to 30. And if I divide, I get x is equal to 30 over 11 which is 2 and 8 eleventh days. So almost 3 days. So 2 and 8 eleventh days it will take them. Okay, so that is example 5. Um, one last problem is example 6. It says the ratio of 16 more than a number to 12 less than a number is 1, 2, 3. So remember 2 in a ratio is like the fraction bar, okay? So the ratio of 16 more than a number. So let's just call our number x. To be 16 more than a number, it's x plus, x plus 16 to 12 less than that number. Number minus 12 is in math, means once again equals 1 over 3. Okay, so I'd look at this and I'd say, well, between these two, my common denominator is 3 times x minus 12. Okay, if I do this, the x minus 12s will cancel, so I have 3 times x plus 16 equals, when I do it on this one, the 3s will cancel, and I have 1 times x minus 12. So this gives me 3x plus 48 equals x minus 12. So if I solve, I would subtract x and minus 48. So I get 2x is equal to, that's a 48, wow. Negative 12 minus 48 is negative 60. And so x is equal to, when I divide by 2, uh, negative 30. So what is the number? x is negative 30. Doesn't make an extraneous. So I know that is my solution. Okay? That is the end of solving rational equations. If you have any questions on this notes video, please let me know. Otherwise, have a great day, and I will talk to you later.